Should we get a fight stick as someone new? Oh, that's a great question. Well, I'll just take this one. I'll take, I'll take Old Faithful over here. This is the stick I use for everything, Chad, and I've been using it for everything for a very long time. Should you get an arcade stick or should you uh, stick to controller? Arcade sticks do not give you a statistical advantage. People say they do, right? And I definitely was in the boat in like, you know, the mid 2000s where if you were a pad player, there was definitely a stigma about you, especially if you were into like Street Fighter or 2D games. This very much is a preference. Boil it down into two elements on an arcade stick and two elements on, on a controller. The joystick and the buttons. On a controller, you have a D-pad, right? Or an analog stick. And the buttons, the layout of the buttons is technically a bit different because of how they are arranged on an arcade stick. Here's the actual advantage. A controller gets an advantage over here. I'm not using PlayStation 5 controller as a good example. This D-pad sucks, but if you do have a, a controller with a good D-pad, there is less movement in between pressing these buttons than there is movement of you going in between a stick. There's actually more space that you are occupying here. And some people, their thumb will be able to do these inputs much faster than people will on a stick. So there is a, a natural, technical, statistical advantage of controller when it comes to the D-pad. However, the buttons are a different case, right? Hitting face buttons and having access to three buttons up here and three buttons down here really fast is way better than the face buttons on a controller. Here's where the whole thing falls apart. If you are playing any fighting game made past most likely 2006, and honestly, the late 90s, Marvel vs. Capcom 2's entire button scheme was changed because of controllers. Most fighting games were getting away from arcade sticks even in the late 90s. So there's a very good chance that your controller is already super accommodating for whatever fighting game mechanics you have. That your controller is actually going to work very well. You don't have to hit all three buttons at the same time. Or you can just map that to a button if you want. Like, a lot of things will be difficult for some players, but there's a really good chance that using a controller for any game that, we're, that, that uses a stick is probably just fine. Here's the number one reason. The number one reason, should I get an arcade stick over a controller? In 2021, Guilty Gear's coming out, there's a KOF on the horizon, there's possibly gonna be a new Street Fighter in 30 years. Which one should I be learning how to play a stick right now? And I'm gonna tell you guys, a personal story and what you're going to be getting into. You've been using this thing for how long? One of these things in its many different forms for how long? A long time, like probably many years. You already know how to use this, right? You know where the buttons are. You, you know if you need to press R2, it's back there. And if you press triangle, it's right there. Your hands already have developed a muscle memory to playing games on a pad. When I had to learn how to use an arcade stick, uh, I definitely for many years of my life, only really played on controllers and very casually on arcade stick. So I had to learn how to play Marvel vs. Capcom back in 1997, 1998 in arcades on a stick because there was no console version. It was only an arcade game. And that was a big issue with fighting games is that there was no training mode and there was no home version of these games. So if I loved the game and I loved the characters, which I did, I had a reason to play, I spent all my extra money that I ever had as like a very young teenager learning how to play on a stick. And guess what I was doing? Oh, I missed. God, wrong button. You have like no muscle memory. You have no idea where anything is. Or even like, how do you hold this fucking thing? Do I hold it like a wine glass? Do I touch it like it's a sexual object? You have no idea what to do with an arcade stick and you'll have to develop an entire set of muscle memory based on this thing that you have not used at all. It's like playing baseball your whole life and suddenly you have to go play soccer. Well, shit. So what are you doing to yourself if you're like, I just want to use, use a stick. You're essentially restarting from zero. That's it. Even if even if you're decent at fighting games, like even if you are like have a basic understanding of how they work, but you've only ever played on pad, you are starting back at zero because you have to now relearn everything of where the fuck your hands go. The biggest reason why this thing is my preferred way to play almost every fighting game except NRS games because I just play NRS games on controller because I hate the cross layout. Legacy. That's honestly it. This this represents a time of video games that many people 
hold near and dear, arcade sticks represent the arcade era. Ar represents where there was a control scheme that only people in arcades could share with each other. And this was the only way to do it. There's also one big thing that differentiates arcade sticks from controllers. What are you doing when you're using a controller? You're using a, just about this, right? Maybe you're doing some of this, but it's essentially finger action, right? Finger action video games. When you're using an arcade stick, you're using your whole fucking arm to press these buttons. You're using your wrist and every other aspect of your fiber and being is going into moving this shit. And if you're playing this with some American bat stick, then your forearm is probably some Popeye shit. Arcade sticks require a lot of kinetic movement. They require a lot of energy that goes into them. The legacy arcade sticks comes from arcades where people would beat these controllers up so much that you had to fucking move that shit. You wanted to like mash buttons or anything like that. People, people's hands would be bleeding. I'm not fucking shitting you. These soft, wonderful buttons that are like, oh, they're so touchy. It's like, oh, you just do mashing buttons. Oh, it's wonderful. I got max damage super. If you wanted to hit max damage storm super in Marvel 2, the buttons weren't like this. They were concave. So they had edges, motherfucker. They would catch your finger in between and people would be bleeding on arcade sticks. I'm not fucking shitting you. People would like break a, 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 an, an aspect, a callus on their hand. Mashing Storm Super or some shit. A lot of movement involved. There's a lot of like crazy legacy involved with arcade sticks. And that's something that's super near and dear to me. That's like something that I have literally fashioned every single thing that I that I make and fabricate right on, on the internet. That's like the whole thing. So to me, this represents like a time long past. Arcades aren't really much of a thing anymore unless people are really specifically trying to preserve them. And this is specifically catering towards a very specific group of individuals that want to keep that era uh, going in some way. That's what an arcade stick is. So the long story short, should you get into a stick? If you want to get better at the game, hell no. <laughs> no. If you actually want to get better at a game, you might want to look into what a hitbox is, which is a whole other can of worms, but a hitbox might actually give you a bit better of an advantage in a situation where the skill to learn a hitbox which is essentially like keyboard typing, right? Is a bit higher. Right? It'll take a little bit longer to figure out how to get good at that shit if you're not used to that. But when it comes to stick versus controller, there's no advantage. There's some things that stick do better than controllers, and there's something that some controllers do better than sticks. That's just the way it is. The big difference now is that if you want to get good at a stick, you want to play your fighting games with gusto. That's pretty much it. You just want to play fighting games the way they were played back in the 90s. And shit.